So let's move on to the panel. Welcome to the panel discussions um, of the transitions away uh, from the LIBOR and, and the implication to the futures market. We had a lot of cover today, as Inamura-san mentioned, in Japan, they end, end label and um, transit to the OIS. It's a part of the global rival transitions to new risk-free rate. Globally, um, the US dollar overnight uh, index uh, will be the SOFRA, and the euro uh, will be the ESTA or EUROSTA, and the GBP uh, to the SONIA. Each country and the jurisdictions uh, are the actively working on the LIBOR transitions and uh, the sharing up to date the color uh, to the multiple channels. Especially in US, uh, transition to the SOFRA uh, making it a good progress and its futures market is getting more active. I see the Japanese banks uh, start trading the fu uh, SOFRA futures contract uh, recently. So uh, with in mind of those uh, today's event subtitle, establishment of Japan as the global financial center, we would like to focus on the LIBOR uh, transitions activity in Japan and take this opportunity to broadcast uh, to the global channel. All pa panelists here today are the Japanese. Um, but the discussions uh, will be done in English and they deliver our voice uh, directly to the globe. So I'm the moderator uh, of the panel, Shun Yanagisawa, and the board member, vice president of the FIA Japan, and the chair of the operations committee, and head of the Jap uh, Japan Futures Clearing and FX Prime Brokerage Business uh, in the city group. On this panel, um, we are fortunate to have the industry expert from the JSCC's TFX, Citi, and Morgan Stanley. Okay, uh, let me introduce. So the first, Hosomura Sans, and uh, from the JSCC, the Japan Securities Clearing Corporations, Executive Officer and Clearing Planning and OTC's Derivatives Clearing. And next, Seo San from TFX, Tokyo Financial Exchange, and head of wholesale business department. And Watanabe San from the City Group, Director, Markets Planning and Control, and Regulatory Specialist. He is the co chair um, of the term rate. Uh, Rate subgroup at the cross industry committee of the Japanese yen interest rate benchmark. And Tomiya san from Morgan Stanley MAFG Securities Japan, managing director and the COO of the fixed income and the FIA Japan Tokyo International the Financial Center uh, committee chairpersons. In derivative markets, most of people know about the, their names. And I'm personally uh, very excited uh, to have this panel discussions with these members. Okay, so the, let's talk about the first thing, the watanabe sans starting uh, from the introductory the questions. Um, can you explain the current discussion status of the LIBOR to the risk-free rate uh, in Japan? please. Sure. So the uh, three key discussion points in derivative space. Uh, first is transition plan for derivatives. As Mr. Inamura of Bank of Japan addressed in his keynote speech, the vast majority of major derivatives players adhere to the East 2020 Ivo fallback protocol. But that's not the end of story, but the beginning. As a next step, the key focus is moving from fallback into the active transition before the date of permanent cessation of NRIBOR publication. We now need to accelerate the pace of active transition from NRIBOR into toner with a clear milestone for the derivatives. 
The key questions here, first, by when should the market makers in the interbank market change the price quote practice from JPY RIBO-based into TONA-based? Second, by when should the market participants suspend initiation of the JPY RIBO-based derivatives? And third, by when should the market participants substantially reduce the amount of n rival referenced derivative exposure? The roadmap for rival transition in derivative space is currently under discussion. Number two discussion point is forward-looking toner term rate, so-called TOF. TOF for one, three, and six-month tenors are currently published for indicative purpose only. Given the strong demands by market participants in the cash products such as notes and loans, the next step is to publish TOF for production, i.e. for the market use. Since the TOF is derived from the market data of Toner OIS in the interbank voice broker market, it is imperative for market participants to trade Toner OIS much more actively and aggressively. The cross-industry committee is still aiming at the publication of TOF for production as early as possible, but no later than mid of this year. The cross-industry committee is under discussion on what would boost the level of market activities in the OIS market. The key questions here are, number one, would the big ban approach like a TONA first as the bid offer code practices in the interbank sub market make sense? Number two is how would we change the current market practices from bit of for quote without specifying the notional size into the quote with a specification of the notional size in Tona OIS interbank broker market. And third, with the initiation of the central limit order book of OTC Tona OIS on electronic trading platform would help. How to activate the Tona OIS market is under discussion. Number three is Toner Index. As Mr. Inamura of Bank of Japan pointed out, Toner Index is under development. Toner Index is equivalent to Sonier Compounded Index in UK and Software Index in US. The aim of Toner Index is to simplify the calculation of compounded interest rates and in doing so, provide a standardized basis through its publication as an official source. Conceptually, the Toner Index is equivalent to a series of daily data representing the return from a rolling unit of investment earning compound interest each day at the Toner rate. The change in the Toner Index between any two dates can be used to calculate the interest rate pay, uh, payable over that period. Tona index may be welcomed by market participants in Japan. Daily compounding calculation of toner could result in a tiny amount of difference in floating rate amount at the end of the coupon period between the two counterparty under the non cleared bilateral transaction in OTC market. The reason for the difference in the coupon amount is often due to the difference in number of decimal points prices for rounding in the coupon calculation between the internal system at, at those two counterparties. By considering the zero tolerance culture on one end difference at the reconciliation of coupon amount in Japan, I would expect the popularity in the use of toner index in the non cleared OIS with end user client as well as other related transactions, which are referencing a toner daily compounding setting in areas. By following the software index in the United States and the Sonia compounded index in the UK, the toner index is under development to increase the usability of toner daily compounding setting in areas. Back to Shun. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Watanabe-san. Yeah, the Japan's the zero, zero tolerance culture. It can be in a challenging. <laughs> okay, uh, so the moving on to the next questions. So the we understand the development of the new benchmark of the forward-looking toner uh, time rate and tofu, uh, but they still have the several benchmarks uh, in Japan, and it's a bit confusing. So the 
I'd like to ask a question to the salesman, the TFX. So the salesman, uh, can you explain the difference uh, and the feature of each benchmarks? Uh, Tona, Tofu, and uh, D table, Z table, yeah, those uh, benchmarks. Uh, salesman, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Yanagi Salsam. Uh, I guess that uh, uh, not all the viewers are familiar with uh, uh, such kind of Japanese benchmarks, interest rate benchmarks. Uh, but now uh, we have used uh, some major uh, Japanese interest rate benchmark, uh, Japanese N LIBOR, Euro N TIBO, and then uh, Japanese N TIBO and TONA. Uh, the former three benchmarks, uh, LIBO, Euro N TIBO, uh, Japanese N TIBO are very similar. Uh, we call them eyeballs. These eyeballs, uh, methodology is designed to produce an average rate that is uh, representative of the rates at which large leading internationally active banks. And uh, on the other hand, uh, TONA is released by the Bank of Japan uh, based on the market data itself. Uh, that is the first difference. And the second difference is that uh, uh, TONA is an overnight rate as it is. <laughs> While eyeballs, eyeballs and eyeballs, uh, these existing interest rate benchmarks have a term structure, one month, three months, six months, and so on. Uh, such rates and includes and, uh, those with tenors and uh, referencing existing some contracts like uh, uh, loans, uh, derivatives, and like that. And thirdly, as LIBOR and the tie board include bank credit risks. And they are calculated from estimates submitted by the leading banks, as I said, uh, while TONA is recognized as a risk-free rate. This is a third point. And then, uh, as you know, eyeballs are broadly used, often referenced in derivative bonds and bronze, but uh, eyeballs had some problems throughout because uh, they include credit risks and uh, it has got difficult to get enough market data. Uh, the underlying funding market uh, is very quiet now. And then the market needs new benchmarks. And uh, then we need uh, such kind of benchmark reforms. Uh, the Financial Stability Board, FSB, uh, published a report in year 2014. In the report, uh, the FSB recommended uh, to improve the uh, reliability and uh, robustness of existing uh, live and tie and developing new risk-free difference rates, risk -free rates, without bank credit risks. And you, as you know, uh, concerns about the sustainability of LIBO beyond the end of 2021 have radically high written. And uh, we need uh, new benchmarks. And uh, now, uh, as Watanabe san said, uh, TONA is a uh, risk free rate and used for OIS, uh, overnight index swaps, uh, with a method of calculating. Uh, the applied interest rate by accumulating uh, overnight pool rates uh, through daily compounding uh, from the beginning of the calculation period uh, to the end of calculation period. The problem is that uh, the applied inter interest rate is fixed at the end of the date of the calculation period, uh, say fixing arrears. Rivals and the tables, on the other hand, are fixed in advance. Uh, this is a very important point of cooperation. And this is a fourth difference. Then the market is developing a new term reference rate. And now, now uh, I'm coming to finally TOF, uh, Tokyo Term Risk Free Rate. It is a method to develop rates uh, based on actual market data. Uh, for Japanese uh, OIS market. And it is a risk-free rate because it 
based on OIS. These rates have a term structure and reflect uh, the forecast for future interest rate. Uh, the applied interest rate is fixed in advance, this is important, at the beginning of the application period. Uh, still, uh, the problem is liquidity in the OIS market. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Seo san uh, Now we understand uh, the difference of the each uh, benchmarks and its, the, its terms and the forward looking or the backward looking. Okay, then, so the, I feel curious about the current Japan OIS market. So OIS is the key. And so what's going on uh, in the OIS market and what's the current uh, challenge and how, the, how to create liquidity. So I think the best partners here uh, to answer these questions uh, is uh, Hosomura Sans as the, from the JSCC, as the, he has been a key person in the JSCC uh, since its OTC derivatives clearing uh, launch uh, back to the 2012 allowance. So the Hosomura Sans, please. Thank you, Yanagisa Sam. Um, JCC started clearing Japanese yen LIBOR interest rate swaps in October 2012. Now we have 25 clearing members and about 100 clients. A broad range of users, both domestic and foreign users, use our services. We have continuously expanded the scope of products that we clear. Speaking of Japanese yen interest rate swap, we started clearing for Tona compounding OIS in 2014, in addition to LIBOR and TIBO. Currently, the vast majority of trades we clear are LIBOR-based trades. Looking at 2020, the share of LIBOR-based trade was 87% in value and 91% in trade count. In comparison, during the second half of fiscal year 2020, up to the end of January, the OS share was 8% in value and 2.5% in trade count. However, we do see that the OS share has been increasing as it was 2% in value and 1% in trade count in 2019, but it is still limited when compared to rival. Unlike overseas CCPs, JCC adopted toner as a discount rate for NPV calculation ever since we launched the IRS clearing services. Therefore, we are in a better starting position for managing the rival transition when comparing to other CCPs for USD trades that had to change the discount rate to the risk-free rate. However, in reality, we have not seen a meaningful transition of liquidity from rival to OIS. OIS is expected as one of the alternatives for replacement of rival IRS after rival cessation. Therefore, JCC has been making various efforts to facilitate the transition. Specifically, we have expanded the scope of OIS we clear. For OIS coupon payment, we have added six month, three month, and one month in addition to the annual payment cycle. We also enabled the clearing basis swaps between LIBO and TONA compounding OIS. Furthermore, we started providing a risk transformation services. This is part of the compression service and it allows for the termination of LIBO swaps, replacing them with new OIS. To improve the liquidity of OIS trading, we would like to do whatever we can as a CCP. At the moment, ISDA is having discussions on the addition of new OIS conventions to, the, to its definitions. Taking account these trends, we would like to consider future actions for OIS market. As an alternative Japanese yen interest rate after rival cessation, TIBO could also be a choice in addition to tonal compounding. Also, 
we anticipate the use of POV, which is a new term risk free rate that is now in the preparation phase. We would like to structure our services to take into consideration various possibilities so that we may assist the market to clear OIRS, IRS appropriately after rival cessation. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Hosomara san. Um, unlike overseas CCPs, uh, uh, we understand JSCCs adopted uh, TONA uh, as the discount rate. Yeah, so it's in a very uh, relatively better positions uh, for the managing the rival transitions. Yeah, although the mechanism is ready, but liquidity of the OIS uh, is, the, is the challenge. So liquidity. So the, how the bank adopt new risk free rate? So the will the bank uh, hedge the regular swaps um, and run the toner or TOF risk? Uh, will the TOF toner uh, trade in the broker market? So the, I'd like to ask uh, this question to the Tomiya san, the COO and the fixed income at Morgan Stanley. Uh, Tomiya san uh, joined. Uh, FIA Japan last year as the board member, and he brings the, his expertise in the fixed income derivatives uh, to us. So, Tomiya san, please. Okay, so uh, uh, TOF Tona basis, that's going, my answer is yes, it's going to be traded eventually, but I think it will take some time. Uh, theoretically, those two rates are similar, uh, so uh, there shouldn't be any large differences, but if you Remember uh, the CCT basis uh, like seven years ago, eight years ago, nobody thought that uh, those two rates, LCH, LIBO, JCC, LIBO could diverge, you know, could be different that much. But uh, after several years, uh, the difference became wider. And if you remember the 2018 January, it uh, went up to uh, 15, 17 basis point in a 30 year point. And then dealer has to uh, make markets for both separate market. And the first uh, dealer needs to take some reserve VA, and then uh, they need to introduce a proper curve, separate curves uh, for both uh, rates. And then there will be a, there are some risk limit. And also this is incorporated into a bar model. And uh, it's also included in the capital calculation. So everything, uh, you know, was uh, captured, this basis was captured in every single systems. And similar thing happened for D Taibo and Z Taibo last year. We had a sudden uh, difference between two rates. These two rates are also very similar, uh, but uh, the difference uh, became wider uh, and leader has to uh, make markets and then also quote the different rates, uh, introduce the proper uh, separate curves and reserve the uh, uh, difference. And also uh, it's also reflected in the risk framework. So I think similar thing will happen to the TOF Tona basis and it's going to be uh, traded uh, uh, so frequently because the data has to uh, have a risk limit and they have to hedge the risk and they have to quote the uh, difference in the basis market. So I'm sure that it's going to happen, but it's not happening right now. And it's going to take uh, uh, probably six months, at least six months to uh, one year. If you look at the uh, US rate, so far swaps, uh, it's still in the early stage. And uh, sometimes the bid offer is wide, uh, like more than one base point at some point. Uh, so even in the US, uh, so far liquidity is not that much. And uh, in uh, GBP term, uh, term risk free rate is not, uh, there is not huge demand uh, as of yet. So I think uh, there we need some catalyst to uh, uh, increase, enhance the liquidity, uh, which may not happen until you know, June, second quarter. But after the second quarter, many market players are shifting to uh, uh, new rates 
in loans and cash products, especially. So uh, if that happens, uh, I think uh, there will be a more market and liquidity. And once it happens, I think it will quickly uh, move to a new rate and these basis market will be uh, more and more popular. That's it. Back to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Tomiya san. So the mm, understand the, the basis uh, between the, uh, the different benchmarks, and it could arise. So the, we had the experience uh, in the past uh, in the basis in the theoretical the same, the, or very similar, uh, the curve, like the um, D type or Z type or issue, or the um, EN, the JCC and LCH basis issues. So there's uh, many, uh, uh, yeah, uh, basis uh, risks there. So the liquidity uh, is the, the key uh, for us, and uh, yeah, and also the OIS uh, is in daily compounded use for the derivatives markets, and the fourth um, use for the loan or cash products. So the resulting the fourth toner uh, basis uh, markets may arise, uh, and the liquidity is maybe uh, coming in there towards to the the benchmark uh, shift. So um, considering that liquidity, and uh, generally speaking, uh, the futures contract uh, provides the liquidity and, uh, and the futures is good for the, uh, the price find, finding tool. So um, I understand there are the discussions um, to launch the risk free rate uh, futures in Japan. Um, so what's the futures contract uh, will be? Mm. So I'd like to ask uh, Seosan, so the head of the wholesale market of the, the TFX for the risk free rate futures. So the Seosan, uh, can we explain the brief about the contract uh, specifications that you are planning to launch in the futures? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm a CEO of Tokyo Financial Exchange and uh, TFX used to list uh, overnight call rate futures. Uh, but currently, uh, these futures are uh, suspended uh, because of uh, low demand. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, we understand that uh, futures is uh, important as well as OIS market uh, for this new benchmark. And the TFX has discussed new toner futures uh, with market participants. Uh, many times in our working group. So, Tony, uh, can you share uh, the screen for uh, new specs or new contract specs? For uh, this is a draft of our new three months overnight for rate futures, uh, as we discussed in, uh, in our working group. According to the discussion, you know, uh, contract specs. Uh, as on the screens, uh, this uh, three months of night for rate uh, futures underlying asset is compounded daily and quarterized overnight for rates. And uh, each uh, contract month has a uh, 20 quarterly months uh, in say five years. Um, this is uh, just an, uh, like an, uh, software futures in CME. And now uh, we have uh, another uh, candidate for new overnight call rate futures. Please go to the next page, Tony. Uh, this is a one month overnight call rate futures. This is just an idea of draft. Uh, this is just one month uh, correct futures and uh, uh, underlying assets with uh, average daily uh, overnight call rates. And then a contract month uh, has uh, nearest seven calendar months, just a uh, half a year. And uh, this one month call rate futures covers and uh, uh, you know uh, front end of OIS curve uh, or TOF 
And the three months uh, when I create features uh, can cover a five years time. So we discussed uh, these two uh, bullet futures in our working groups. Uh, but uh, we are uh, a bit in a uh, difficult uh, position uh, currently uh, because uh, you know, uh, open, overall Japanese and interest rate market is very quiet, uh, not active. And then uh, uh, TFX, is struggling in the market and are now wondering whether we can keep maintaining uh, its Japanese and interest rate futures market, including uh, these kind of uh, tonal futures and an existing uh, currently, current uh, type of futures. We need uh, market volatility and then, uh, uh, we think that we need enough volume in OIS market first for talk and uh, before you know uh, our future tonal futures market. Uh, but uh, this is uh, FIA Japan uh, conference, so we understand uh, futures is very important for this kind of Japanese end benchmarks and uh, please support. Uh, Futures market, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, uh, Seo san. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in summary, uh, the one month overnight uh, late futures uh, use the average uh, late, and uh, three months use the compound. So that it's the aligned the contract specifications the perspective. It's aligned with the sofra. Uh, one month, three months in the futures contract uh, uh, at the CMEs. And uh, I, I think it is uh, favorable to the market participants, uh, I assume. So the, yeah, it is a great product and uh, we need the market, uh, more market participants uh, to join and support the TFX, the futures uh, contract launch. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, let's move on. Yeah, let's leave. Okay, so the deep dive a little bit. So the fallback and the cessations. So um, it's timeline. So I'd like to ask uh, this exciting uh, question uh, to the Watanabe san. Uh, she is regulatory specialist uh, for the uncleared uh, perspective. And uh, for Samara san, uh, JCC is executive officer for the cleared swap market perspective. So the uh, starting from the Watanabe sans, please. Sure. So in the space of non-cleared OTC derivatives, the majority of the live reference transactions are subject to the ESO derivative fallback languages, assuming that the both of the counterparties adhere to the ESO protocol. The fallback, therefore, will be triggered upon the public statement to be made by either by IBA on the scheduled permanent cessation of rival publication or by UK FCA on the scheduled permanent cessation of rival or rival becomes no longer representative. The public statement may be made soon for all the five currencies of seven tenors soon. Upon the public statement, the fallback provision will be triggered but will not fully become effective. On the fallback trigger date, a value of spread adjustment to the risk-free rate daily compounding setting alias will be fixed for each currency slash tenor of rival based on the five years median of the historical rival versus risk-free rate spot spread. In the case of the JPY rival, the fallback will be fully effective on and after January 1st, 2022, most likely. 10 months to go until the permanent cessation of n rival publication in the form of a panel bank. Given the limited timeline, let me, let me please raise the two potential challenges on whether the market will be able to meet the deadline. Number one challenge is payment minus two operational issue. For example, in the case of hedge swap associated with the structured nodes or loans, swap part is subject to ESA derivative fallback languages. After the fallback effective date, 
floating rate fixing will be possible just two business days prior to the coupon payment date under the Easter fallback. Floating coupon amount of the notes or loan part, however, not may be able to be fixed, reconciled, and paid within two business days in the same way as in the head swap due to the operational constraint at the local bond or loan payment process. In such case, the bilateral negotiation to amend the East fallback languages to allow the parties to spend three or five business days instead of two business days prior to the payment date may be required. Number two challenge is non-linear derivatives. For example, constant maturity swap referencing JPY LIBOR Tokyo swap reference rate, i.e. LIBOR TSR, published by Refinitiv for one year into 40 year tenure, which is out of scope from the ISD protocol because the swap does not reference LIBOR itself, but references LIBOR swap rate. LIBOR TSR is also used for the cash settlement of JPY LIBOR swaptions widely. JPY LIBOR TSR therefore is a critical benchmark for the long tenures over one year JPY derivatives market. Once the JPY LIBOR will no longer be published, JPY LIBOR swaps may no longer be traded, i.e. no longer the LIBOR TSR will be published. The alternative benchmark of JPY LIBOR TSR could be Toner TSR. The Toner TSR, however, has not yet been published at this moment. In order to publish the Toner TSR as the robust benchmark, the market liquidity of the over one year, year tenor Toda OIS market need to pick up. The implication is we need to boost the toner OIS trading activities, not only for the short tenor, such as one month to six months from the perspective of 12, but also the longer tenor, i.e. one year to 40 years from the perspective of toner TSR. So that's for unclear swap. So over to Hosta Morrison for clear one. Um. JPY LIBOR is expected to be discontinued permanently at the end of 2021. JCC has been discussing with its members on the premise that the switchover to the ISDA fallback rate will happen on the date of LIBOR cessation. However, recently, other major overseas CCPs have proposed a one-time conversion of LIBOR trades to OIS instead of utilizing the fallback under the ISDA definitions. The timing of this OIS conversion seems to be at or shortly before the rival cessation. Responding to these discussions, JCC has hastily initiated discussions with its members, which are still ongoing. Members have raised some concerns with the applications of the ISDA fallback to CCP cleared trades. For example, after live cessation, new trade referring to fallback rates are not expected. So the fallback trades will rapidly lose market liquidity. Under such low market liquidity, the unwinding of fallback trades through compression would be difficult. As a result, there will be the risk of a huge amount of exposures remaining for years after the fallback date. Moreover, when the is the fallback applies, members will hold positions in both the fallback swaps and OIS. In this case, margins would be greater than only holding OIS positions where all positions can be netted. Also, there is a concern from the CCP's risk management point of view. If a member defaults while holding positions in fallback trades, there might be no one willing to take up such trades. And as a result, the smooth completion of the default settlement process might become difficult. On the other hand, some members have expressed their concern about whether timely preparation is possible 
if we switch our policy to an OIS conversion method, some members have been working on preparations with the premise of dealing with the, with the fallback. From another viewpoint, members using multiple CCPs are requesting that all CCPs use the same method. The research recently announced its policy to adopt OS conversion method as a result of consultation with their members. We would like to decide our policy very soon in light of member comments like those I just mentioned. Okay, uh, thank you, Hosomura uh, san and uh, Watanabe san. Uh, thank you very much. So, the, actually, the, I'm the member of the JSCC's IRS the steering committee and uh, for a few years. And uh, I believe JSCC OTC clearing business uh, is one of the most open CCP uh, in terms of the listening CCP's members' voice. So, JSCC host working group uh, frequently and uh, it's open to the members and observers. And four work cessations and, and the one-time conversions that recently uh, start discussions uh, is the hot topic uh, in the market, uh, but I believe uh, we can manage it um, with the adoptions of the market's voice. Um, in the other hand, uh, the bilateral markets and um, unclear stuff, especially the non-linear derivatives uh, that Watanabe san mentioned, uh, seems a bit challenging, and the uh, market participants uh, shall continue to proactively engage on those uh, challenges. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So the, let's move on to the next questions. So the, how prepared is the market? So the expectation to the Japan list free rate futures from overseas investors. So I'd like to ask uh, Tomiya Sans and uh, Watanabe Sans. So both the global FCM and the proactively engage uh, with the clients on this topic. So the uh, Tomiya Sans uh, can go first. Yeah, so first of all, I completely agree with the Yanagi Sasan comment on JCC's policy. You know, uh, JCC is really open to uh, uh, market participants, and we, you know, JCC is really good at uh, listening to the market voice. So that's why I'm not too worried about the uh, clear the positions. Uh, but in terms of the uh, this uh, transition speed, I'm worried about the bilateral trade and also cash and the loans. Uh, I have to say it's not uh, uh, as fast as we expected. And uh, just protocol adherence, that was okay. Uh, but as Inamura-san mentioned in the first uh, speech, it's just a safety net. And uh, it's, it's like a seat, seat belt. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't run into the wall, uh, even though you have a seat belt. So you need to actively convert your old LIBOR portfolio to new rates. And also you have to do a lot of things like uh, changing the discount rate in the CSA. Uh, so, but uh, that type of active transition or voluntary conversion uh, is not the, you know, as quick as uh, we anticipated. There are so many challenges on that. Um, we had uh, so many uh, regulation change, regulatory changes in the past uh, five, 10 years. Uh, so we have uh, several netting set, like uh, uh, legacy non-cleared swaps and also non-UMR, UMR is a non-cleared uh, margin regulation, legacy trade and VMIM CSA new, uh, new trade under the UML. And we have also several uh, differences like uh, negative rates floor on the collateral interest and eligible collateral might be uh, uh, another issue. And uh, initial margin optimization, that's also a headache if we have to move the portfolio around. So if you start talking about these issues with your counterparties, it's very difficult to quickly move to a, a 
transition or new rate. So I strongly suggest that you should uh, start thinking about this uh, conversion earlier and uh, start talking to the client or counterparties and uh, actively voluntary conversion, converge, voluntary conversion is the most important uh, uh, in this environment. Uh, so, and cash and the uh, uh, loans, especially cash, we have uh, some difficulty in converting or buy back the old legacy trade. And uh, personally, I may, we may need to think about the tough legacy issue like the US or UK and even talk about the synthetic libel type of solution. Uh, it's that it's difficult uh, for us to uh, speaking to the older clients, uh, including a retail client, and move add some pullback language or move the trade. That's really difficult. So that's uh, I think uh, industry headache. That's something we need to do uh, by the end of this year. Okay, uh, what another sounds, uh, can, can sure. you uh, sure. comment? And also the please uh, include some essence of, uh, about the uh, one-time uh, conversions or the <laughs> mandatory conversions that which the uh, uh, sure. uh, already mentioned, but it's from, from the global or other CCPs. Uh, okay, yeah. sure. So the, yeah, I, as I mentioned, first, when, as far as I, I, I talked with the global actually buy side clients or, or institutional investors uh, at overseas, everybody actually is looking for is a clear milestone for rival transition in derivative space. But in addition to that milestone, I believe the overseas investors may want to obtain the comfort on what alternative actually benchmark would be dominant in the JPY derivatives market, i.e. Tonar, TOF, or Taibo, under the multiple rate approach. My response to that point as a good student at school is that'll be what everybody in the market would decide based on her or his own needs. But if I had the liberty to rank the orders among the three potential benchmarks, my simple answer is number one is toner, number two is TOF, and number three is Taibo in order. I have two simple reasons for that. Reason number one is need for credit risk-free rate for majority of derivative markets. The cross-industry committee in Japan fully respects the principle addressed by Financial Stability Board in 2014 in this regard. Therefore, Taibo as a credit sensitive rate should be ranked as number three, which is behind Toner and Atoll as a credit risk free rate for majority of the derivatives market. Reason number two is robustness and resiliency of the benchmark. Toner is an unsecured overnight call rate, which is more robust and anti-manipulative and more resilient under the financial stress compared with the TOF derived from the OTC swaps market in one month up to six months dinner. My message to overseas investors, therefore, is very clear. Majority of JPY derivative market would reference toner rather than TOF or Taibo. I agree with Hiroki on the use of toner in derivative market, probably limited to the area of derivative hedging for cash product, on which I believe further discussion at the industry level is necessary. In terms of Taibo, Key challenge would be potential migration of Euro and type Z type into JPY type D type in the future. Given the certain uh, this uncertainty, although Euro and type Z type has been more dominant in the derivative market than JPY type D type, the use of JPY type may become popular to avoid any unintended consequences at the time of future integration. In terms of the toner futures, I believe the timing of listing should be not the earlier, but the later. 
I'm against the idea to make the Tona futures listing front run ahead of the OTC trade of Tona swaps because it may result in the benchmark manipulative situation for Tau, as we know the lessons learned in the case of rival manipulation in the past. My view is Tona futures should be listed at the time when the sufficient level of Tona OIS liquidity become ensured, but I strongly expect that Tona future would be listed in the future. At the time when the market liquidity of Tona futures becomes high, it would be ideal that the TOF would be calculated from the combined market data between Tona OIS and Tona futures, which would enhance the robustness of the TOF. So when it comes down to the mandatory conversion from rival into OIS at CCP, as Hosomura san mentioned, I think my, my view is the direction is correct, but the execution should be carefully considered. I understand well the rationale for CCP to convert the cleared rival swap into the standard OIS convention immediately before or on the date of the index cessation effective date of arrival. But on the other hand, I think uh, we need to consider uh, uh, but carefully design mandatory conversion from execution perspective. First is consistency among uh, C major CCPs because the major dealer holds a CCP to CCP basis trade. Second is the change of payment date. Payment date of rival coupon in the rival swap is usually set at the end of the calculation period, but after mandatory conversion, into OIS convention, the payment date will save two business day from the end of the calculation period. Number three is timing of mandatory conversion. Bulk of clear swap need to be terminated and rebooked at the standard OIS convention with a residual cash compensation all at once. That will require heavy operational burden at both clearing a member and the customer side as well. But back to, back to Shin. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Tomiya san and uh, Watanabe san. Uh, it's quite insightful. And uh, yeah, as Watanabe san pointed out, the, the credit is free and the anti the manipulation is the original objective of the LIBOR decommissions. And the futures uh, contract uh, is the good tool uh, for the liquidities and transparency with the certain amount of the uh, uh, secured liquidity in the OIS space. So I, I think it's the great uh, story. So the okay, so it's time is the come uh, is close to the uh, end time. So this just final uh, questions actually the yeah message to the um, the audience. So the I'd like to ask each panelist to have the one uh, sentence, one comment to the audience. Uh, so is it okay to start from the okay Watanabe san, please? Sure. I, ex I expect market participants to get accustomed to use the risk free rate in the derivative space by the second half of this year. But I believe the real driving force is not the big dealers, but the end user clients for the derivatives. My message, therefore, to the end user client oversee is please get ready for Tona OIS trades as early as possible. And let's go together for transitioning JPY rival into toner in the derivative space. Okay, thank you, uh, Tanabe san and uh, Seo san, uh, please. Yes. Uh, all the market participants, uh, including us, must be involved with this transition. So, yeah, I noted and uh, Watanabe san saying uh, toner future is not the earlier, but the late, yeah. Uh, although I mentioned a negative overview of TFX rates futures, uh, but then I believe the uh, transition will be a good success and uh, which will activate uh, the Japanese air interest rate market again. Uh, I would be very grateful if uh, we can help transition. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Seo san. Okay, so the next, uh, uh, Osomura san, please. Um, to be ready for rival cessation, JCC has been taking various actions, such as expanding the scope of eligible OIS and facilitating transition from rival to OIS. 
uh, the rival cessation at the end of 2021 is highly likely. Each CCP needs to determine their transition policy very soon and should be ready on the date of rival discontinuation. While we have been reviewing our transition method, such as is the fallback and or is the uh, and or OS conversion, either way, there might be a high burden on our members for the bulk transition of a large number of trades. So we would like to promote members' voluntary transition from rival into OIS in advance as much as possible. We appreciate any comments at any time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, last three, uh, Tomiyasu Sans, please. So it's just my experience, but when I'm speaking to uh, many people, clients and uh, uh, dealers, uh, sometimes uh, it's better to have a centralized team or project team under the top management and push this initiative uh, from the top. Uh, sometimes a uh, certain department is in charge of their portfolio, like only for screen swaps or only JPY swaps, or sometimes only for the swaps booked under the Japan branch or something. But uh, this is the whole portfolio change. And the ISDA CSA, as you know, covers all the transactions in the netting set. And it has impact on the pricing, initial margin calculation, and bar and risk limit and everything. So uh, I think it's important ha to have uh, some centralized function. And those functions need to push this initiative as much as possible. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the, uh, all the panelists. And I think it was a very insightful uh, discussion. So we see the approximately 300 people are registered uh, to the today's event, and uh, many of them are from overseas. Thanks to the technologies uh, to remove the physical barrier of the event the host in Tokyo, and uh, we are the vocal and through the, this uh, virtual channel, and we continue to focus on the market development in tandem uh, with you. So that if you have any uh, feedbacks to the panelists, please do free, feel free to contact me and FIA Japan. Uh, we welcome your opinions, comments, and advice. This is the conclude of the panel discussions. Thank you very much.